going down. Because the goal for that is 4.7. I don't know if that's going to work. Because it's already all the way tight. Okay, so when we flip the pill and add two more degrees of camber, it's gonna force the wheel to turn out. Oh, it, it would camber it in and tow it tow out at the same time. And so then you have to turn this clockwise a full rotation to pull the tow in. Correct. And then on that one, you have to do the same thing. Yeah. Go clockwise a full rotation. Clockwise. So a whole 360 degrees is what Eddie's saying it sounds like to compensate. How much is 360 typically on this? Is that a massive change? Off offhand, I'm not sure, okay. but we can find out on the screen. Okay, so we can play with it and test it and see yeah. what 360 does. Okay, okay, cool. Absolutely. So to get access to this, not only to remove the other plastics like when I did the install, but remove this other plastic as well. And then you can get to that back one. I keep confusing which the back one controls versus the front one. Mostly from what I've seen, it's usually caster primarily. All right, I looked it up again. So the back one is camber, the front one is caster. So what you're doing now is caster. And is it moving? Bottom left graph. This guy? Should be going down. Because the goal for that is 4.7. I don't know if that's gonna work. Because it's already all the way tight. In summary, what's going on is that front one that would be for caster, we can't adjust it any further to get within spec. We're gonna try to do that up top first without having to touch anything down below because we got this aligned a month ago when I put all the rear suspension stuff on. But we decided to do this instead of having that maxed out, backed it out a little bit so there's threads on both sides so that there's adjustability in the future. Don't know if we're gonna need it or not. And then we're gonna actually go and adjust caster underneath. Camber was adjusted by that rear one that's now sitting at negative one degree of camber. And then when you flip the pill over in the future, that just adds negative two degrees of camber to whatever setup we have on here right now. So that's the idea. We're going five, seven on the caster. It's supposed to be four, seven, but the adjustability doesn't allow you to do much more up top. So then we're gonna go down below and do that. We got to, was it 5.4, 5.5? Yeah. It that was completely maxed. It takes quite a few turns to get that thing to move, huh? So now camber, can I get that to one? So the final part is you're adjusting toe. That's right. That's the one I'll have to adjust at the track. A little, a little too far, so bring it back in a little bit. What are you we trying to set toe to again? 0.08. And so this, that camber with me in it goes to? To, to 0.9. 0.9, gotcha. Yeah. So it changes then, that much when you get in and around. And then this drops down to 4.9. This drops down to 4.5. But this stays at 0.9. And it'll be just about what they want as far as spec numbers with you in it. So that one's 0.28. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how much of a turn you need to change that 0.28. So I'll we'll see if I can gauge it so we can guess what a full 360 rotation would do. You go counterclockwise. So you got inch here, so that's half. And it went well, point I mean, 0.05. I mean, that was about a quarter turn. Quarter, quarter, quarter turn, turn, yeah. yeah. So, that, so now, now it's, it's about a half. half and it went point 0.17, roughly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's about what, like maybe a 60% turn yeah. total? Yeah. So 60% took it from what, point 0.32 to, so it's about a quarter of. A degree about a quarter of a degree by 0. 0.6 so so a whole rotation is going to take it or that was 60 percent of rotation so it's going to be if you did a full rotation it's going to be almost double that a little yeah. shy than doubled that so probably about point, yeah, point 0.4 of a degree by a whole rotation yeah something like that right about yeah okay yeah because we did a little under three quarter turn. Mm hmm. It changed it about 0.25. About a quarter degree for three quarter turn ish. Is it the same thing where you have to like back it out the other way before you tighten it? It changes? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. Not always, but sometimes because when that happens, what, what I've noticed is 
when you go to tighten the set the jam nut, it rotates the outer tie rod with it. Mm. So it's pulling that tie rod at the same time and it's adjusting it again. Mm. So if you just loosen up the jam nut, make sure the tie rod is in the angle as as far back as it would as if you were locking it down and then kind of fine tune it. And I always bring them back to center as if they're relaxed and straight. When you say bring back to center, what do you mean? So make sure your tie rod's level. Oh, and not turned in the joint. Yeah, and not like that. Yeah, yeah, right. Or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I always just bring them back to center. All right, there you go, finishing up. So we got this thing all aligned. I went and road tested real quick to make sure it was driving straight. Got it dialed in, got it dialed in with me sitting in the driver's seat within spec of what we wanted. The next video that you will see regarding the alignment will probably be when we test this out, put on 305s on all four corners, especially in the front, and then flip that pill over and I'll show you how easy that is when I, because I plan to test this before we actually go out to the track. We'll be going out to the track in a couple weeks from now. You'll see it live on the track, but we can also, like I said, we'll test this prior. So if you have not already, like, subscribe, comment, we'll see you in the next video.